Fear of the Lord is the name of my sermon. Why we fear the Lord. In Hebrews 10, 31, it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. We today, society, do not fear the Lord. We keep on saying he is a, he is a loving God. True. But also God is a just God. For it says, in number, the first point of the fear of the Lord is, it brings knowledge. In Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Knowledge is also known as the word of God, for it says in Proverbs 2, 1, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ears unto wisdom and apply thy heart unto understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasures, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. By reading this, we know that the fear of the Lord is us to desire the word of God, which is in return fills us with wisdom and understanding. He lays us up. Okay, here we go. And number two, my second point is, it can bring salvation. For in Matthew 10, 28, and fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In Luke 23, 39, we can see an example of this. And one of the manufacturers was hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered him, rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive do rewards of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Right there we could see that the fear of the Lord came upon one of the thieves on the cross. Now in the Bible it also mentioned he also joined. Therefore, what happened to this man to suddenly say, what, do, to finally come to a realization is the fear of the Lord. He saw how pure Jesus was. He saw that Jesus Christ was the living God. And in, in that moment, the fear of the Lord came upon him. And in that moment, on his death, while he was dying, it caused him to repent. And then in number three, it, okay, in Acts 30, 25, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom does he think I am? I am not he. Oops, sorry. Okay, I missed up. Yep, Acts 13, 25, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes are his feet I am not worthy to lose. Men, brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear God, to you is the word of the salvation sent. And that scripture alone is saying, those who have the fear of the Lord, their heart is opened up to the word of God. Because it's in that moment they come to the realization they need God. And now, in number three, it saves our life. For it says, by faith, no being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared to an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. And then in Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And thou shalt no priest and thou shalt no priest to me. Thou shalt have be no priest unto me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. And right there in those scriptures is saying that if you do not have the fear of the Lord, your life is also in jeopardy. For many a times, even in my own life and my family's life, we had a warning from God particularly in one situation in my life. When I was a young kid, we were swimming in a swimming pool and we were living on top of a dome, on the a hill in a dome. And you probably read about this, but in that story, I was swimming in the swimming pool and my mom was emptying out the swimming pool and 
what, and when my mom was emptying it out, she felt in her heart to get us out. And just as she got that feeling in her heart to get us out, dad called. And he also told um, him to her to get her to get us out. And she, with great speed, said, kids, get out. Now, at that moment, us kids were in age of rebellion. But something in us caused us to move quickly, speedily. I say unto you, yea, the fear of the Lord came upon us, us, not only me and also my sister, for it was us who were swimming in that swimming pool. And when we got out, it was not only 10 seconds later, that swimming pool collapsed like a snake and, sw- and went literally down like a snake, down the hill, and it was probably even pieces were found miles down the road. Don't know how far, but you can ask my dad about that. Anyway, what happened is if we would have stayed in that swimming pool, we would have died. It was the fear of the Lord that saved our life. And yet in many of the stories, you hear such stories. Why did God let my children die? I say unto you, there is many a time that God has warned us. But because we, even as a nation, has lost the fear of the Lord, things are happening. And we are blaming God. But God says, do not do this. Do not do this. Yet we do not fear him. We say we love him, but then why do we not obey him? Because we think, well, God died for me. I love him. I have him in my heart. I gave him my all. Then why aren't we not serving him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength? I say unto thee, it is because we have lost the fear of the Lord. It guides us. In Hebrew 12, 28, Therefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God excessively and referencely and godly fear. And then 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Many people teach, <clears throat> many people teach false doctrine because they do not have the fear of the Lord, as did the, not the leaders of the Jews at the time of Jesus. As if they did, they would have had their eyes open, for they would have checked to see if the words of Jesus were true. It opens our eyes. Even today we see we see God, but even God's word says of the Jews, What then, are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. It is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throats is an open sepulcher. Their tongues have they used deceit. The poise of ash is underneath their lips. They are, misery is in their ways. And the ways of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Even though they had the word of God, there was no fear of God in them. They willingly reject the word of Jesus, for they lacked understanding. It is the same today. We accept that we are taught because we lack understanding. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And that brings me to number six. It brings obedience. Obedience comes from not only love, but also the fear of the Lord. For even David, who feared God, said in Psalms 10, 3, 103, I will set no wicked things before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn to side. It shall not cleave to me. And in Revelation 3.15, it says, I know thy works, that are neither cold nor hot. I would rather that are cold or hot, so then thou art lukewarm, and neither are cold or hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. In today's society, we focus on everything else besides the Word of God. We don't even really care about God. We say, oh, God will give us riches. He'll give us this. He'll give us that. Well, God isn't about that. He's about righteousness. He wants to save your soul. Therefore, why do we are okay living in the way we are? Even in today's society, instead of saying, God, I repent of my sins, I come back to you. Even in God's word, it says, if my people were to hear, turn away from their wicked ways, 
repent. I will heal their lands. I will restore them. But why? Because we fear not God. For if we had, we would turn away from our wicked ways. For it says in number seven, it warns us, those whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be sold before the whole congregation. Who diggeth a pit shall fall therein. He that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. Even in that saying alone, it warns us that living in sin has its consequences. For it also it says in Proverbs 1.10, My son, if sinners entice thee, canst thou not? If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us work for privity for the innocent, for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up as alive as the grave, and whole as those who go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our house with spoil. Cast in our lots among us. Let us have one purse. My son, walk not in the way of them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain that net is spread in the sight of any bird. They that lay in wait for their own blood, they perfectly for their own lives. So are the ways of anyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of their owner thereof. The reason we have today this problem with society is that we, because not only don't fear not God, we give freely into sin. We free give, give, give into the greedily, to, and we lust after everyone else's stuff. God says, Thou shalt not lust thy neighbor's goods. But instead of us truly seeking God and seeking God, we have our eyes on the stuff of this world. And God says, Fear ye God. Why? Because he had the power to destroy your soul and body in hell. And then in Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of Father which is in heaven, may will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prospered, prophesied in thy name, in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Many people just say, oh, that's the sinners. I say unto you, sinners never call a Lord with they reject Lord. It is talking about the people who say they gave their heart to Jesus. Therefore, why why have they not been accepted into heaven? Why did they call upon Jesus? They accepted Jesus. It is because they willingly rejected the fear of the Lord and lived their own lifestyle, their own ways. And people say, why isn't there any such thing as revival today? Well, let's just see, look into that. For the fear of the Lord says it also brings revival. Then had the church rest for all out throughout all Judea, Judea and Galilee and Samaria and Samaria, Samaria, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and con- in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Let me repeat that. And were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. And again, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. This is one reason why if there is a revival, it doesn't last. We say, oh, wow, I am a sinner. And then after a while, we're like, well, I repented. I'm fine. And everyone walks away because they truly not understand the fear of the Lord. It brings submission. Submitting yourselves unto one another in the fear of God. What I'm about to read is many sermons and priests about it, but this one part seems to be forgotten in most sermons. They talk about why submitting to yourself and to the husband, and the husband submitting themselves unto, unto uh, well, loving the wives with all their heart, mind, soul. You know what I mean? Love, God. love your wives as the Lord God gave himself for the church. But it says before all that, submitting yourself to one to another in the fear of God. We have lost the fear of the Lord in our own marriages. We treat marriages like a, a one-nighter. And some of us, they're not surrendering to me. They're not doing my will. 
what God says first things first. You're supposed to be submitting yourself unto God. You're supposed to have the fear of the Lord. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. For it says, as it does say, Why submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord? And for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subjected unto Christ, so let us, the wives be either unto their own husband in everything. Husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the word, water of the word. And also in Colossians 3.22, Servants, obey in all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleasers, but in the singleness of heart, fearing God. Is fear and the fear of God the same? I say nay. For even God's word say in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of, power of, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And then number 10, it hates evil. Proverbs 8.13, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogance, and the evil way, and the foreign mouth do I hate. Even love hates evil. He, for it says, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the soul of his saints and deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. And another thing we do not understand, for it is in, well, the last verse was found in Psalm 97 10. And my last firm, uh, thing of fear of the Lord is 11. It is eternal. In Revelation 19.5, the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Even throughout all eternity, one reason we stay true to God is because we have the fear of God in us forever, even in our holy new bodies, sanctified bodies, we will still have the fear of the Lord in us forever. And even throughout eternity, there are many stories in the Bible, and even in real life, about those who had the fear of the Lord. And because they did, they repented, and their life was spared. Even wicked kings were spared when God did warn them of his wrath from their current lifestyle. Then they heard this. this. Some of the, when they heard this, some of the kings did repent and, repent, and God did forgive them. Then this was because they accepted the word of the Lord and embraced the fear of the Lord, even for a short while. It is even today, many people blame God for the death of, or outcomes on God. And God says in his word in Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whosoever a man, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And God again, and God again says in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, seeking whom he, about whom he may devour. Meaning that the devil, or you could call him Satan, that brings, de brings death and destruction. Though what allows him to do so, says so in John 8, 44. Ye are the father of the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and both not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Seeing he is the father of lying, if there is for you, if you for if you lie, isn't there, are you not therefore walking on his property? And is lying the only thing I say unto you that is of the devil? Nay, for, for God has warned us that adultery, not by, by, not by God, okay, for God has warned that adultery is also not by God. And there may be many things, and there are many things that are not be of God. For God says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Know ye not that the unrighteousness does not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, adulterers, or idolaters, nor eminents or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor coveters, nor drunkards, nor rivals, re revivalers, or extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And again, and in Revelation 21, 8, be but the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and adulterers, and all liars, so how their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, 
which is the second death. Therefore, does Jesus not say in Matthew 6, 14, for if ye forgive men, men their passes, if ye forgive their men, so if your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, there, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Therefore, if these things not be of God, and they are of the devil, and thou will live in unforgiveness, or in doing one of these things, and have not repented, and though li thou art living, Aren't thou not living in the property which is of the, of that of the devil? And there, when bad things happen, why therefore blame ye God? When God says for that the devil is like a lion, therefore, therefore thou art blind because thou knowest not the word of God and the words thou do not know, and are that and are from those whom themselves do not have the fear of the Lord. They themselves not know not the word of God, for even God says in Matthew six thirty three. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things to be added unto you. Indeed, this pertains not unto, indeed pertains unto food and clothing. But had not Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life, and they ha might have it more abundantly. Therefore, to say everything that happens is of God, I say unto you, you have not the fear of God. For God says in 1 Peter 3.12, but the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the fear of the Lord is against them that do evil. Also, it says in Psalm 19:15, To show the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no upright or unrighteousness in him. Again, it says in Psalm 5, 4, Thou art not a God that give, have pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. For Therefore, what does God say to those that Say that everything that happens is of God. Or even those that say God is okay with those who are living in sin. For it says in Proverbs, Proverbs 12, 22, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the hearts of the foolish proclaimeth foolishness. We know not the word of God because we have not, not only the fear of the Lord, but we obey him not. For Jesus says in Mark 12, And thou shalt love the Lord God, th thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none the other commandment greater than these. Therefore, if thou art to love even your neighbor, thou shalt do no evil unto him. Those who seek to please themselves do, does not, God say in John 1.12, but as many as received him, to him he gave the power to become the Son of God, even to him that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And yet again, Jesus answered him, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not what I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Therefore, seek ye God's will, and you will have life and more abundantly. And, I all, and to all I say to you, fear ye the Lord. Depart from all unrighteousness. Repent and obey God. This is why we have problems in America today. We have embraced the love of God and watered it down and even taken the word of God and watered it down. Why? Because we have rejected the fear of the Lord.